Hey everybody, welcome back to Pirates with Ben. I'm A7X fan Ben, and this is only the second uh, video and audio blog post. It's my 19th blog post overall, and I'm just going to get right into things. There's been some site changes since the last uh, video blog, actually. I added the logo from the podcast. Um, the menu doesn't um, come with you when you scroll, which I like. And I think that's going to make the pages a lot easier to see and read, especially because with the with the menu, it keeps expanding. So I keep adding pages. So now it's not going to scroll with you. So you'll be able to focus on the content of that particular page without having the menu, you know, take up probably two or three inches of the of the screen, potentially, depending on what you're viewing it on. Um, and then I'm, I'm on the podcast page right now, which is one of the newer pages. So didn't really work out the way I wanted it to. I wanted to have an audio player embedded on the site, but instead I just did a YouTube playlist because basically everything I tried didn't work, and you can uh, see um, the details of that in the most recent blog post from May 28th, and at the bottom there's a link to episode 5 audio because for some reason I don't have that one on YouTube. The video file is gone, um, but I've got a playlist, and it's sorted uh, by the newest one, so the Rise of the Fiend set review that was recorded just a couple nights ago, podcast number 24 is up, and that's the featured one on the playlist right now. So you can see all the podcasts right on the site. And uh, next I'm going to go to the Vassal page, because I just did a little minor change here. I'm probably going to add more to the Vassal page. It's one of my favorite pages, and an important one, definitely. I've got the tutorial featured, and then some more videos at the bottom of the campaign game retrospective videos. And then at the very bottom... I added yesterday, I added links to my Dropbox, uh, the vmod, .vmod files where you can download um, scenario maps, basically. So Circle of Blood and Defense of St. Helens. Last year I made maps for both of those scenarios, so you can check those out. And then I've got links to the rules. And uh, I would host them right on the site so you could download them, but .vmod and .vsav files don't seem to be... Um, supported by the WordPress file upload. And I searched for a plugin for Vassal, but I didn't find anything, so I might look into it again. But either way, it's not a big deal. And then I added a picture for the footer as well from uh, Command the Oceans last year. So first feature is the deal of the day. Today, it's I'll admit, it's almost a little bit lame. Um, eBay's been a little iffy lately. Um, last few days, I haven't seen a ton of great stuff that set of uh, 36 packs of OE for $39.99 free shipping. That's still up. Um, but today's deal is Caribbean, 36 packs of Caribbean for about 90 which is kind of pricey. But um, Hills Wholesale Gaming has it for 72 But I live in the next state over. I'm in New York. They're in Pennsylvania, based in Pennsylvania. And I did a test like last week, and I talked about it in a blog where uh, – I tested the shipping on a 36 pack lot. I think it was the OE, and the shipping was like 20 bucks. So, if you live anywhere, it seems like the shipping would increase it to you know seven or 92 or more with this shipping. Especially if you lived farther away from them, like if you live in California, maybe the shipping would be even higher. So, the deal of the day: 36 packs of Caribbean. Um, the seller is top rated plus. Great feedback. So I'll have a link in the description um, and in the post, and then. On the audio, I'll also have a link um, on the audio post as well. So next we get to the card of the day, which is always fun. So I'll enter 1 through 14 for the set number. Hit enter. Number 13. So that's uh, Savage Shores. And I'm going to 14 because I'm including Return to Savage Shores, uh, as I said before. <clears throat> so here I'm at, I am on the Miniature Trading Database, which is an amazing resource. Got all the data for all the game pieces that were released, pictures, everything. So I'm going to sort by number for Savage Shores. Go to the bottom. It goes to number 52. So I'm going to go 1 to 52. Hit enter again on the random number generator. And 26 is the number. I think I know. Yep. HMS Silent Swan. That's what I thought. So this is a ship. This will be kind of short because this ship isn't really all that special. I do have this one. I think I traded for it, maybe. Um, so HMS Silent Swan is an English two-masted schooner type. Apparently she doesn't have the schooner keyword, according to the database. Um, it's a common from Savage Shores, 10 points, 2 cargo, SS move. Both cannons are 3S English, like I said. And when this ship is within S of an enemy ship, she gets plus S to her base move during her move action. 
So, so that's a nice ability, similar to the Buscador. Um, it's a decent ability, but the problem is the ship, for some reason, is just overpriced. The Buscador is only four points more and is way better. That's a Spanish hoist from the same set. Uh, HMS Silent Swan is really not very impressive. There's not a lot you can do with her. I guess Captain and probably a Helmsman to be a support gunship, that would cost you 15 points. You could get HMS Oxford for the same price with just a Captain, and that ship's SL with four 2S guns. So HMS Silent Swan, not a good ship. Um, in terms of crew setups, pretty much any point level, I would just do Captain and Helmsman. Um, you could try her as an empty gold runner, but even the English have way better choices for that, like HMS Hound, four cargo, SL Speed at seven points. Um, so the Silent Swan, 10 points, two cargo, SS Move, and mediocre cannons, or average cannons. The Silent Swan just isn't a very good ship at all. Um, and kind of an anomaly, because Shavage Shores was a good set. It's a good set for gameplay. So this one is just disappointing, really. So, yeah, there's not a lot you can do with crew setups either, because it's going to be, it's a fragile ship, only two cargo. There's not much point in putting name crew on. So the ability is nice, I guess, to get out of trouble if you're trying to flee, or if you're trying to maneuver in a battle, but the, the ship isn't very effective in the first place, so the ability doesn't help that much. I think this could have been probably six points, honestly, with such low cargo and average stats. I think six points, even if they had the scurrying keyword as well, six, no more than seven points would have been more appropriate. Um, so Captain and Helmsman, maybe an Oarsman if you wanted to as well, for any point level, really. There's not much you can do with it. Uh, and then game piece rating, I'm going to have to go really low. I'm going to say maybe 2.5. Um, I would rate it even lower, but there's some really bad ships out there. This isn't like, you know, this isn't like a bottom 20 ship in the game or anything. So I'm going to give it a 2.5 out of 10, um, just off the top of my head. It's not impressive. Uh, the artwork's kind of dull too, so this is not really one I would recommend uh, getting a hold of. I might try to link it up if I find it in eBay, but you know, you're much better off getting some other stuff. So, so a disappointing card of the day, but that's all right. Um, we actually, last time I had Savage Shores, I had, um, I got the, the Celtic Fury, I think. So one of the 10 masters, which was pretty crazy. Um, or no, I got the Zanfu. I got the Zanfu from uh, Return to Savage Shores. That's what it was. Cause it's number 051 from the last set that wasn't released. But anyway, so Silent Swan, not highly recommended. Uh, 2.5 out of 10. Uh, just, you can pass on that one, I would, I would say. So the picture of the day, I know this is tough for the audio, anybody listening, but I've got a picture up. The first picture listed under my Economy Edition game, and the reason I'm doing this one, you can see the ocean if you're watching the video, is because my Economy Edition game started on basically May 31st or May 30th of 2015, so tomorrow and the next day, and kind of June 1st as well, is basically the three-year anniversary of that game starting, which is pretty exciting. It does feel like it's been three years in a way. I guess other games feel like it's been less. I mean, it's been more than two years now since Vassal Campaign Game 1 ended. That actually feels a little bit more recent, if anything. But uh, Economy Edition was one of the best games I've ever played. Um, you can see from the picture I used a pretty big map. I had a lot of terrain. Um, if you're wondering, that lagoon uh, towards the middle is uh, something that's impassable by ships, even with ghost ships. So only things that can submerge can go into the lagoon where I had a gold island. Um, so submarines and sea creatures that could submerge were able to access the lagoon, but other stuff, even with ghost ship, was not able to. And uh, I used Cannon Fury's Economy Edition rules, which I'll try to link to, and they're linked in the post. So I'll probably just link to my Economy Edition Battle Report post. Um, I will say some of the old links to Economy Edition are now um, irrelevant because the post image changed their URL from .org to .cc. So that wrecked uh, picture links. So um, for the campaign games, I quickly got them back up because I was able to, and you could do this if you have your own battle reports through postimages.org, which is now .cc. Just copy and paste your existing pictures and the battle report into a Google Doc or something like that where you can use find and replace. On Google Docs, it's CTRL, hold that, and then press H for find and replace, and then you can just replace .org with .cc, and then that'll convert um, the pictures to the new URL, because post images isn't down. Uh, I have a bad feeling it might kind of 
not exist in who knows when, um, based on Photobuck and just image hosting sites in general being pretty unreliable at this point, unfortunately. But if you use find and replace, you can get it back up pretty quickly. So just paste reports, uh, find and replace, replace.org with .cc, and then you'll be good to go. So, so I'm going to be celebrating the, the three-year anniversary of Economy Edition starting. Um, I'm going to put a link to the new, um, a new link to the existing battle reports. Unfortunately, now all the battle reports are in one post, so it might take a while to load the page on miniature trading. And uh, with that being said, at least it's still up. So I've got my Economy Edition reports back up and running. So that's good. Um, it's one of my best battle reports. The game lasted about a month. I uh, wish it was longer, but... Um, but yeah, one, probably my best looking game, without a doubt, until Command the Oceans of last year, which totally blows even Economy Edition out of the water, uh, quite literally. So, but still one of my favorite games, um, kind of kind of an, an important game too, because Derek has cited it as uh, being one of the inspirations behind some of his campaign games as well, which he plays pretty much every year now, which is awesome. Um, and then... As a final thing, as some kind of news, apparently miniature trading has been slow lately. So for me, I've been lucky. Um, I can see the forum right here. Uh, Wolf and God Mason both talked about it, and somebody at Board Game Beef was having trouble over the weekend accessing the site. Um, I use a URL, which you can see in the video here. Um, I don't use the F equals forum 9 URL. I use this one with parentheses. It looks weird, and it's a longer URL, but... That always works better for me in terms of staying logged in. So I don't know, it's just some weird quirk. If I use the if I use the more regular URL, I'll try to get it up right here actually. If you click on the Pirate CSG forum, yeah, if you forum f equals nine. For some reason, I can't stay logged in as well for that. Um, looks like Wolf posted in a thread, which is cool. Um, yeah, I'll do that as a little little mini news to make the the vlog a little longer here. Check out what Wolf has to say. So I'm doing, yeah, so the rules the rules survey has some results, so, um, so I'm doing a little series of threads on miniature trading where uh, rules for thought number 10 talks about mysterious islands being changed and things like that. So, and Wolf, yeah, Wolf doesn't like the way mysterious islands were set up, which I agree with in general. So, so I'm not going to read the whole post, you can pause it and see it here if you want, um, and I'll try to remember to link to it. There's always a ton of linking to do afterwards, but... That pretty much does it, so hope you enjoyed the features, and uh, I definitely want to do this more often, so thank you for watching, thank you for listening, and uh, I'll be back soon with more. So, thanks for watching.